Hey everybody, welcome back to Swamp Donkey Gardens here where we do a whole lot of gardening, a little DIYing and having a whole lot of fun. And we've been doing a whole lot of DIYing. Or is it DIYing? Yeah, anyhow. Uh, yeah, come here sitting on the front porch with our two half mannequins. <laughs> that light up. We got it at an auction. Uh, there are hollow, one of some of our Halloween decorations. So, but yeah, let's let's go through the. Let's take a walk around the. This, this video is gonna be a whoa! I almost knocked you right over. Uh, you got the old veg stand, still rocking and rolling. Pumpkins, tomatoes, mild peppers, lots of tomatoes, onions, green tomatoes. We got lots of that stuff. I'm just showing you what we got, but this is this is mainly what I've been up to. I've been I've been up to Canon. I got uh, my own hot sauce. I got uh, spicy hoagie sauce, fresh ground basil, hot pepper butter mustard, inferno red sauce, uh, mild peppers and red sauce, stewed tomatoes. We got apple butter. We got uh, apple sauce. Yeah, we got potatoes, we got afghans, we got we got all sorts of stuff there up on the up on the veg stand. But I just wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, but I guess what we're what we're mainly focused on today is is I know we were doing you know veggies for a, a, you know the whole season, uh, but right now it's 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 fall. It's October, I think, eleventh. Uh, it's midday here in PA. Uh, I did a lot of. Uh, rototilling here it was our beets uh up here is where our, some garlic's gonna be um our cabbages are doing all right they, they've come back they've come back we've got some heads of cabbages off of them our our peppers are still doing pretty good we haven't got any frost here yet so which that's kind of cool it's october and we haven't got any frost but uh you know i said before i was gonna like, we got the other other poly tunnel we got that all up I know I was going to do a video on it, but it's it's really not really not like rocket science putting it together. It's just putting up this, you know, like kind of like putting up a tent. But but yeah, that's all. Yeah, our cherry tomatoes are they've they've pumped out cherry tomatoes, and we have to go. I have to do a little bit of harvesting on them today. Uh, I'll I'll pick a another jug of those, and like I said, it, we're just real quick here. We'll just we're just going through. Uh, here, but like I said, we're fo fo focusing on, and there's our, there's our, uh, and it doesn't, I don't know if the camera does it any, but th that is a jungle of uh, yellow pears. Look at them. But yeah, here's a Mars, Mars, a little Mars. I'm not, I'm not even saying it. They're, they're tomatoes. They're paste tomatoes. They're really good paste tomatoes. Same Marjanos, same Marjero, same our rock and roll, whatever. But yeah, they're doing good. We got some cabbages going up there. Our strawberries, we're gonna have to winter them off. We'll we'll go through and I'll do a video on them and train, you know, we'll trim them up. Our lettuces are all doing really like right back there. Which this this uh this here, I, it, it, the lettuce has performed great. So but here we're in a new polytunnel and I got all plastic laid down, so we're gonna kill all the grass in here. Uh we have to get a piece for over on that side. Uh, but we got all our potted plants all in here, kind of holding down our plastic and kind of, that's their new home. Uh, they like that. They went from not being so, doing so good to greening right up. Uh, tomatoes are still rocking and rolling. Look at, uh, they're, oh yeah, most of them, like that, that tomato plant there doesn't even have anything on it. So that, but here we're still getting, we're still getting heirloom tomatoes. We got tons but our jalapenos are doing good we got to do, go through them we just i just picked some uh uh pepperoncinis they're doing pretty rock and roll uh uh oh what happened to the corn the corn's all cut down it's up there on the, the farm stand i've been i've been get, getting rid of that uh but yeah we're gonna go uh down we're gonna take it uh the same size maybe come out a little bit but we're gonna take her all the way down to this tree for next year and like I think I explained it last time and we'll go down here real quick but yeah we're gonna extend that corn for so we so we got some more more stuff to do and I uh, amended this for the 
for the winter. I get got that ready to go on, and we're still poop, pumping out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at they're crazy. They're just all over. I've gotten so many of these Fourth of Julys. I'll definitely plant them again next year. Uh, like I said, them were given to me by my father-in-law. Thank you, Daryl. They're they're ah, and mother-in-law. You know, whatever they all gave them. But yeah, like I said, I wasn't really focusing it on. I mean, you know what everything looks like. I'm just kind of showing you what it's still here, October 11th, and we're still getting red tomatoes. And they're just, there's some green ones, we'll pull them. Reds. They're not getting real huge. The heirlooms aren't getting real great. But uh, another surprising thing here, let's go over here and come down in. Look at, we got a bunch of Romas in there. They're on, oh, I got so many aromas. But these these ones over here are pretty much like these. I mean, we get a couple peppers and tomatoes off of those, but uh, but yeah, like I said, that's that's going good down there. We did get the other greenhouse up. I don't know if that's exactly where it's gonna go. I think it is because we're killing the grass there now, so I guess that's where it's gonna have to go. So, uh, but back to, Back to what I was focusing on. Let's go over here and get some. Uh, I know they don't like that, but let's go over here. We need to get some Corlins. Cortland, Corlins. So, like I said, I usually, we usually don't uh, go into the, uh, I'm going to show you something else here. We usually don't come in the kitchen. We usually pretty, pretty much stay outside. Ah. But yeah, we got there's a flat. There's another half flat. So there's pretty much that's all uh, heirloom mortgage lifters. And then we have there are seed potatoes. I will save the, all these for and I'll plant them next year for seed. I'll put them down in the fruit cellar. Uh, this here is full of red potatoes. I'm calling this my uh, my potato silo. <laughs> so this is the, the top layer here is all red. And then the bottom down in there, but you can't see them there. There you go. They're all white. So with that's high storm my potatoes for, for right now until it starts getting colder and then them, whatever's left there will go down to uh, uh, the fruit cellar so but let's let's get off over in here i don't need these anymore let's go into my laboratory my kitchen <laughs> so we got oops we forgot our apples but i'll bring i'll bring them in but what we have here is that's about uh half a bushel half a bushel of apples Something on the order of that. Let me go out and grab my Corlins. Corlins, whatever the hell they are. And these babies are nice. I'm telling you, they're nice apples. Corlins, Corlin. Beautiful, beautiful juicing apples. We got these ones too, which we pick from a local one of my buddy's local trees. They're, I'd say half of them are about this size. They're, they're huge. I'm trying to figure out a way to get up to, uh, get up to the top because there's a bunch of these ones. They look just like this. I don't know the name of these, but they're, they're delicious. So, uh, so, but yeah, that's, we'll go with that there. And I got to put some, I pretty easy put some gloves on. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some apple mash is what we're going to be making. And then we'll press it. I made my own apple, uh, homemade apple press. And we'll go we'll get out there and we'll, we'll get through doing that. And I do like to be pretty, you know what I mean? I've been, I've been doing a lot of canning. Let's, let's turn you up here. We don't need it. Yeah, hey, how are you? Uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of canning, so... I, you know, I try. You gotta, you gotta keep things sterile. You gotta keep things clean, and just using like regular just soap. I just don't. 
I don't care because they have, you know, they have uh, perfumes in them. I mean, they work great and you know, nothing wrong with them, but, but they just have perfumes in them. So, but when I, I sterilize everything with, uh, with star sand, which is a, a non rinse, you don't have to rinse it. You just, uh, you put it in a 55 or yeah, 55 gallon, a five gallon bucket or a sink or uh, what I use to do is, is just mix it and put it in a spray bottle and you can spray it right on whatever you, whatever you're using and it sanitizes real well. So, uh, but by I'm no means affiliated with that. So, I um, mean, if you want to look that up, that star sand, that works, that works real well. So, uh, but yeah, getting into that, I want to show you here what I'm, what I'm going to do, but we are making, we're going to make some, uh, we're going to make some real apple cider. Let's go over here and twist you around so we can get you there. So, but this is all I do. I, I just, you know, these apples are all washed. They're all, they're all clean. And then I use my, it's a, a I don't know, separator, spreader, cutter, what have you. So I, I take rid of, and I go through them real well. You know what I mean? They're, I mean, little bad spots like that ain't, ain't going to hurt a thing. I mean, if you're, if you're really that, that conscious, you can cut it off and, you know what I mean? Chuck it off to the side or, you know, but that, that little, that little ain't going to, I ain't going to, ain't going to hurt a thing. But when I get the one to, you know, where I, uh, or, you know, where I need to cut it off, I'll cut it off. I don't, I don't like to put rotten stuff into, into the thing. So I'll just line it up with the core right there. See how it goes. And yeah, it don't matter if it's straight, if it's not, we put everything right in there and then right in the bucket over there and rinse and repeat. Keep on keeping on. And then I'll go through this whole bushel and I think it's about a bushel and a quarter, I guess, with me adding the, the Corlins, Cortland, whatever. Correct me in the comments. I'm sure somebody will. Somebody that doesn't have their Italian card anymore. Oh yeah, that's right. We, she got it back. You got it back. I'm just kidding. That's an inside joke. Uh, so yeah, but that's all I'll do there. And I'll go through this and uh, I mean for for video purposes right now, we'll we'll go we'll do the rest of the apples. Just like that, I mean, it's just a, the same old simple rinse and repeat. Make sure you don't get any crappy parts on there and zip it down there. And the only thing you're doing here is breaking it down to get a mash, you know. Uh, so, you know, I mean, they're nice rinse. And I'll have pieces all over. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how much this stuff. I get a face full. Okay, so now here we go. So, this half of the apple I see is okay, but... That slice, eh, you know what, I don't even, we don't even need it. This slice, nope, don't need it. And that little bit there, I mean, we can just, we'll just cut that out. Cut the bad parts out, throw them off to the side, moving on. You know, but you have to keep an eye on things and you can kind of look in there and, I mean, they can see if it's, you can see any bad parts, any good parts. And like I said, I know the seed, you probably shouldn't throw the seeds in there, but I don't think juicing them, smashing them, because there is, is some kind of arsenic or something, just a small trace amount of apple seeds, but I I think we're we're all right. See we got muddy. But yeah, that's like I said, that's rinse and repeat. Oh, see here we got a here we got a big chunk. And we'll take that out until it's so it's no more. Just get rid of that. It was just gone, you know. You just don't want stuff like that in your. I don't want stuff like that going through you. I know I've heard I've heard some people uh, that they just they just chuck it in there. You don't make no difference. But I don't like to do that. I like to be like I said. I like to be. I'm not the cleanliest person in the world, but I like to be kind of clean. So. But we'll get that out of the way, and then I'll, like I said, I'll go through that, and you see now I do it, rinse and repeat, and let's let's get one of these Corlins and do one of these babies. They look beautiful. They really do. Now these apples are all natural, so they aren't sprayed. They aren't. Oh yeah, that's nice. That really is. That'll make some nice juice, delicious, sweet, appley. So. On to the next step, we get our, uh, and by, by no means, 
am I affiliated with uh, any of these products? I wish I was. I mean, if they want to, they want to send me some stuff, that'd be great. You know, they I mean they know they know where to get a hold of me. I, I guess. Uh, but we'll plug our. And I'm I'm sure there's a thousand ways to do this. I mean, you're just making apple mash. I mean, they make apple grinders. They make blah blah blah. You know, but this is the way that I found that works the best for me. Well, I take my ninja apple slicer, uh, yeah, food processor, and get her in there. And, and I know this is going to be kind of loud. Oops. Hold her a little far. And this will be kind of loud, so we'll just go here, and it's got all sorts of different settings on it, and it's got this setting, and it goes... And I think it's got a pressure sensor in there to uh, know when it's pretty full because when it gets, it, it tells you when it's pretty full, it just shuts off. So, uh, but it's not burning up or anything. So, but yeah, we'll go to that and take our apple slices and make a mask. What it is, and then you take a handful and stuff it on in there. Works the best for me. I, you know, it works, works out for me. It works, works great. Gets a perfect consistency. You get the most amount of juice out of it. And down. So we'll just go to one. So it stops. Like I said, this is just a process. You just. See, there you go, and I usually run it on high until it runs itself out again. We get some stuff up there. We're all right. Like that. And I usually use some thicker chunks that go up there. I just throw them back into my bucket. sanitized 55 gallon or yeah here I keep saying 55 gallon that is not even close to 55 gallons uh is a five gallon bucket all my, all my buckets are all sanitized real well I use that star you know that Santa star they're all food grade buckets so uh and then I got these uh mesh bags or I just use uh they're a painter for painting I mean you put it in there for straining paint but they work and I mean, you can order them online. You can get, you know, for the, you can get regular, you know, I guess the mesh would be a little finer, but I just went to my local Sherwin-Williams and, and got, they were two bucks a piece. So I got five of them and that usually, that works great for what I'm doing. So, but I usually just take this and then just set it on the ground here. Let's go here. See there? Oh yeah. I take my just to get the, just to get the pieces out of there. And now this doesn't have to be super super thorough. And this is how I get stuff all over the place too. But I'm just I just got it out of here. I usually put it right up on the counter so I don't gotta go anywhere with it. And here we got that's your mash. I mean it's just shredded shredded smushed apples and it's it that works it works great now i just dump that right in there get a couple tops and and again what i said before rinse and repeat put your stuff back together yeah put your processor back together But his girlfriend's outside. No. So yeah, that, that, like I said, there you go. Put it back on disc and get it out again. 
my processor has little suction cups on the bottom, so it stays pretty well. And I know all these apples in here have nothing wrong with them, so I can just stuff, grab and stuff. buying a juicer but eh, why buy why buy something when you don't got it when you don't have to so we'll just throw all that stuff right in there like I said you can throw anything you get out of here you can throw right in there because all it's going to do is get pressed and turned into a whoops I just dumped some right on the ground and again there's our mashy mash it's just shredded up apples skins Everything right on, right on in there. Bring the juice out. Now you can, you can, uh, you can spray your mash with like a mixture of water and lemon juice, and it wouldn't turn brown. But I, I don't, I don't mind if it turns brown. It gives it. I think it gives the, the juice a richer, a richer color. You know, it's, it's, it just looks better. I think. So, but I'm gonna. I'm going to continue doing this here, finish it up, and then I'll bring you back for the for the next process. So hold on a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm still at it. I got about halfway through here. More still cutting them up and smooshing and making our. I was just uh, I forgot to tell you. I know I showed you the court ones, for those uh, apples that we're using. Uh, the other one is, I think we're using Macintosh. Yeah, here's one. We got a Macintosh here for juicing. And we're using a, e, it's either a Northern Spy, this one here. I, it's either a Northern Spy or a type of apple, kind of like the Northern Spy, I guess. Maybe a little, I, I don't I don't really know the name of these ones. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to come back and I forgot to tell you that, you know what I mean? What I was using, you can use any kind of apples for juicing. Uh, just it's just going to depending on the the tartness and the you know the sweetness that you want of you want your juice. I mean, it's going to come out sweet unless you do like all crab apples or something on the order of that. Uh, but yeah, this this process is not the funnest part of the process of the of the whole ideal or ordeal but it's something that needs to be done you have to you can't just press big chunks of apples you have to you have to make a mash because it to get maximum juice out I mean you can press the big chunks you can press whole apples if you wanted you got a big enough press you could probably just do it but I don't have a big enough press but yeah I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'll finish these up and I'll get back with you here in a minute Hey, all right, we're back. Now we got all that. Uh, yeah, we got all that right, while well, we're here. Got all that mashed up. I, you got to check this out. Ooh, I made these yesterday. That is apple syrup. And I think I'll do another video on, on how to do that. I think the Alexa's back here picking up. But yeah, they got that. That apple syrup, that's one thing you can make out of apple cider. You can make a ton of things out of apple cider. I'll take you back here. Where I got 
do 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 Or I got uh, some hard apple cider brewing. Somebody's in the, in the bathroom in there, showering. So, let's turn some lights out here. We'll go back out that way. And we'll get out to the garage to where, where we're at. Look at that table. Mess. Messy. Yeah, a working table. So, hey, you gonna sit there and eat all day? I guess he's staying in there. So we'll go out here and we'll get the, we'll get, show you what I got going on out here. I got the uh, Apple Press. We got the, probably from about, I probably would say a bushel and a quarter. I would say that. I wouldn't say a bushel and a half, maybe a bushel and a quarter. We got, uh, some of this stuff we got I would say probably five, six probably about seven seven gallons of mash because this one's about half full and this one's about three quarters of the way full so so but yeah there's our mash it's we've seen that in there it's it's just all mashed up ah uh, yeah, let's set you over here. I don't know if this is going to be a good angle. Well, we'll set you that way for now. We'll show you the things. We got our apple, our basket here. It's where we... I need a drink of coffee. Oh, yeah. That's good. Excuse me. Now that's part of the, uh, that's the top of the, the press. That's the head of it. And then down here we have, like I said, there's the, there's the, the, uh, bucket with the holes. I just, I just went around and drilled all sorts of holes all over it. And I'm telling you, this thing works great. I had another, I had another stand there, which is an old, Old motorcycle stand that I use, but boy, I tell you what, I, I beefed it up. I put some uh, four by fours on the bottom, and I drilled it to it, and I, and I, I, I tell you what, that sucker, it, that's a good base right there. Uh, and I got my stainless steel pan here, to which, which one I, my, let's bring you up here. When the smusher comes down, comes down in here, and it smushes everything down, and it just, it just presses right out into this, into this basket, and, and there's my funnel with my thing there's my catch basket which is that's nice and all this stuff's nice and clean i like i said i stars and everything uh and i got a little grate down in there so it just catches the little particles or you know whatever falls in there just just trying to keep trying to keep everything as clean as possible and like i said there's the there's the where all the juice runs down in and and uh and yeah that's that's the old that's the old stand that sucker works i'm telling you that, that thing works great that's yeah, it works. It really does. It works really good. And then I got my two buckets of mash here. And then we'll set you up here. And then our press is our our floor jack. And we'll show you how all that works. And then we got uh, kind of my makeshift plumb bob. <laughs> so I can kind of find the center. I'm going to put you up here. I'm just going to hold this. And I just kind of hold it on the top, the top knot there. I'm, I'm kind of centered, but I could, I could probably come this way a little bit. Still wiggling a little bit, but yeah, I could probably come, come this way probably about two inches. We're pretty well centered up this way, but this way we, we need to come up a little bit. So we'll move this up about two inches. And there we go. I'll take you down here, show you down with these buckets. I got an extra, where the heck did I do it? Oh, right here. Not in either. I might have lost it on the journey. I'll be right back.
missing a bucket. Where's our other bucket? I'll just use a pan. I'm gonna for my. I can't just put that all in that press; it won't fit. I wish it would. But we're gonna take some of the mash out of here, out of this bucket, and we're gonna put it into that bucket. We're just not gonna lose a whole bunch. It's all about half this one. Oh, yeah, there's that. We'll just half it. Now we got a, our cakes. And then I'll. I have these. They go in between everything. Like pressure plates are just food grade plastic. And this one is. It's a. Uh, has a uh, waxy film on the. It's out of a produce box. But it has a nice waxy film on it. And. So it doesn't it doesn't permeate the cardboard so but we go in there and you want to make sure you and we put that right down in there and you can kind of see it in there you want to make sure you don't got any air voids and then we'll just twist the top like that take our bottom pressure plate Put it on in. And we already got juice falling. I don't know if you can hear it. But this one here, you got to bring the... I mean, you can see the... It's just running out of there. So we'll quickly go transfer. Whoa. Oh, yeah, we're coming already. Look at how much juice we already got in here. We'll just... Uh, We'll just dump this juice right in there so it all gets filtered. It'll go, it'll go right down into the bucket. So that's about right to the right to these this top rim here. You can see it in there. Uh, so we'll take this other top bucket. It's, I mean, just just pressing it, uh, just pressing on it. You can hear it. Bring it down this way. Yeah. I mean, we got we got half a gallon of juice right now. So I'll put you up there. Now let's go back over here. And then we got our presser, which so I don't spill my coffee. Another drink of coffee. Never hurt anybody. Yeah, drizzle all over. And then I got the. I just set that on there like that. And like I said, you can hear the, you can hear the juice just flowing. And then I got my spacers back here. They're just piled up here on the back of the table. Put a spacer on top of there for my jack to sit on, and I think we can make up the gap. Yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> jack, you can hear it down there. You can hear it just a just a dumping. And I'll bring the top of the jack up to the. Right to the center of the post. I know it's on center of my. You want to kind of keep everything kind of, kind of in the middle. You're never going to get. I mean, if you made your own apple press by itself, you could get everything square. But for what we got here, that works great. 
I cleaned this jack off. I, I mean, I cleaned it as best as I as I could. You know, kind of the. It's not a brand new jack. It's definitely a working jack. And you just keep on pumping. Yeah, it gets down to you for you know it's not gonna. And I have other spacers in there to wear out. I'll pull it out of there, spin some, spin some uh, the mash around a little bit to get maximum juice. But usually, usually about one or two presses on these apples, it'll just it'll do it. And I know when I'm going so far, I can hear it on my roof. Hi, pal. My boy doing garbage. in the garage because usually outside it uh, the bees really uh, they like this stuff so what are the fruit flies so just to tell you that watermelon so yeah I'll keep on jacking up till we get down to I got part of the bucket blow it out of there so I Usually likes to. <laughs> it's not a fast process, it really isn't. Yeah, I know I'm going to. I'm going to about where we're at, so I can hear it on the I can hear it on the ceiling moving around. So. Then you just give it. Give it time. You can only get so much out of it, especially with something on the order of this. I mean, we have. Uh oh, blow out. But that's no big deal. Just back her up. a little bit. Get a plate. Another plate. And maybe one more plate. Spin you up here. There you go. Undo my jack, get the jack back in there again. We'll just give this one another little, little light press and we won't go crazy on it. Put you on your thing. All 
I know, I know, I shouldn't smoke. go crazy with Jack. Because believe it or not, there's probably, there's probably about 2,000, if not a little bit more pounds on, I mean, pressing down on that. You wouldn't believe it, but that's, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of pressure there. And we're getting a little more juice here coming out. We'll just go until we can't go no more. We really had a catastrophe blow out back here. Redneck apple press. Yeah. So we'll give this a couple more a couple more minutes. And then we'll put our other bucket in there. We'll just put one right in there. That's that other bucket. We'll just put the whole thing right in there and see what happens. Yeah, it's more now they're still pretty good. I mean, you got a pretty good drip. Pretty good drippage. And it's about right there on the bucket. And I think on, on the yield here, I think we'll probably get right around, I would say about three gallons out of this. That's That's my... From doing it before, like I said, if this is about the same amount of apples that I did, uh, I did the other day, and I got roughly around right around three gallons. But yeah, I got all sorts of stuff in there. I, I enjoy doing it. Uh, I, like I said, the apple, the apple syrup. I I really it was so fun making that. I mean, it took a long time. It took like ten hours of just a slow, slow cooking. You know, you couldn't get over. You boil it off first, but you couldn't get over it. It's, it's like, it's good. It's, and it uses its own natural sugars. But, I mean, I added some stuff to it just to give it that that flavor that I like. So, let's pull this sucker out of here. And... Put that other one in there and get this, get this a pressing. These are a little finer bags they're just little small milk bags uh, but yeah that's what you get you get a like a cake and I mean it's it's fairly it's fairly fairly a dry mixture I mean if I would press it if I had a bigger press I mean I could probably press more juice out of that but uh, that'll be just fine then I'll go down here and grab my other one the other mat on there and we'll grab our other our other cake, and we'll put that over in the pan. Yeah, hell of a blow up. And we're going to have to do that in two. So we'll empty one of these bags out of our cake. And then we'll throw that one in there. We've got these handy dandy little elastic things that hang on the bag or hang on the bucket and we'll do the same as we did before take about half perfect you know I, I kind of push it down here just to kind of make a about the same size as this bucket we'll move that one over there first bucket of mash our first bag of mash, I should say. I'll put our sleeve into the middle plate in there. 
Yeah, this one's juicy. We'll get that over there and we'll get our... And like I said, we'll just... Oh, jeesh. I just bumped a bunch, didn't I? Wasteful. Very wasteful. Get our other two sleeves in there. Centered. I would say it's pretty well centered. We're pressing. 